is up guys, welcome back to the workshop. Where the hell have I been? Um, I'm very sorry for not uploading recently, I've just been so busy with work. I'm about to start college, uh, which is a really, really good thing for car mechanics. And I've just been busy with this thing, which has changed a lot since you guys have last seen it. Um, kind of mind if the engine was in place last time I uploaded, I think it was, but I don't think there was a whole lot of aesthetics to it. I think it was just still the stock engine. I think you guys saw it run. I think that's about it that you guys saw. So let me give you guys a quick walk around and a quick um, uh, hear and see of the engine. Well, a quick listen to the engine, a quick um, sneak peek of it moving. <laughs> As you guys can see, this thing has changed quite a lot. I've actually got the seat belts, little things first. Seat belt actually, um, well that one's still welded in because it actually works, but I've got those two at the bottom there for my legs. Uh, screwed in because it didn't really hold on properly uh, Well hold on not held on hold on properly uh, As you can see I've got this bit here at the front. It's not welded in properly yet As you can see I did try to weld it in but this stuff is really awkward to work with this like it is aluminum or Aluminium as I'm supposed to say because I'm Scottish, but I prefer to say aluminum not aluminum it, Yeah, it is aluminum and um, it's just really awkward because it has this like really weird outer coating that you can like grind away and bring out the actual color of it and the nice shine from it but it does it does take a while to get that off so it is really really awkward to work with um you see i've just uh gotten all the rust off of this and i've just filled up some holes that were here i uh, still gotta grind them down um but this side here hasn't changed a bit the only parts that have changed is the front the other side and the back which i will show you Here's the side that has changed dramatically, as you can see here, I've got this little thing running from here all the way to there. Uh, <coughs> sorry. And uh, I've welded in some of this door, it's not all completely welded, so you can get up here, the welds are really snotty and horrible if my camera will focus. There you go, it's really, really horrible, so I need to go back over that. But that is just again because of uh, this stuff is really, really, really awkward to work with and uh, quite annoying it sometimes but I uh, work past it so there's still all this to weld up and then there's that bottom bit there to weld up so I have to take off the wheel for that um, and yeah I'm gonna have another little panel here as well that's gonna have a little slit in it maybe uh, just for another little window that is gonna be a window there there is gonna be that uh, Perspex glass it's like uh, plastic but it's see-through so it's a lot uh, stronger and less brittle than glass but it is really really wobbly and really really flexible so I'm gonna have to put some supports in to stop it from doing that the side that has changed the most the engine <laughs> Look at this. I have a battery compartment here that I've literally just finished welding up it's really really sketchy and so is the wiring so i'm thinking about calling this the sketch rod <laughs> or the cart rod or something like that you guys can come up with a name in the comments below because i am at a loss for names i can't figure out a name for this but i just made this this was actually meant to be for my um e-brake uh for uh drifting but uh, i think i think i'm just gonna bolt it down onto the um because there's gonna be a whole panel at the bottom here so i think i might just bolt it down to there and i can use my left just to bring it up a bit and the biggest change here well, second biggest change is it can actually move, so it's connected to the sprocket and there is a clutch there as well, so that's really good. And the biggest change of all is my custom made, handmade by me, exhaust. <laughs> it's insane, this is such a nice exhaust with the carbon, ow, it's still hot. Uh, the carbon fiber exhaust is amazing, it looks so cool with the blue and the purple on it. And then I've literally just finished welding up those um, bits there just to hold it on. Um, and here the exhaust manifold, well the exhaust port. Uh, I've, as you can see I've just stuck a bunch of washers there and bolted down super super tight. Uh, I've changed out the spark plug from stock one to a little bit of a more efficient one because the one that comes stock with it isn't very very efficient. Especially for this time of the year, I do still have it. So when it comes to winter time, I'll put that one in so it can run a bit better in the winter time. Air filter is still the same. I'm gonna be changing this a lot because I think I might. I think I'm still gonna go with a EDF motor, electric ducted fan motor, and I have a forced air intake so I can get just a little bit more power out of this. But still the same intake, still the same um, carburetor. So I'm gonna be changing these out um, at some point once I get the money for it. 
Um, I'm thinking about either just putting a RAM air intake or just the EDF thing, which is a lot more complicated, and I'll have to have a pipe going from here all the way to the front, which will be really, really complicated, but super damn cool, and will give this thing a massive boost in torque and horsepower. Um, I haven't bypassed the governor on this, if you guys are wondering as well. Um, I'm just going to keep the governor as it is because I don't want the engine to blow up. I've adjusted the idle needle, so when I just give it a little bit of throttle, the clutch will engage and there will be no struggle for the clutch at all. Um, and it won't overheat and burn out. Uh, the wiring is completely done, so it's electric start now. Um, and obviously I've got new fuel in it, so... Uh, I've taken this bit off because I'm thinking about maybe putting a pulley here um, and then I don't know I'll, I'll see how much um, pulley turbochargers are in case I don't want to do either of those things like have pipes going up there or having the ram air intake I think I might just leave that off just in case as a plan C really if, um, if I can afford a um, pulley turbocharger Wondering where I actually got the muffler from Funnily enough eBay Everything that I've bought for this project has been on eBay. This isn't sponsored as well, but you can find so much on eBay. If I can build this from just eBay listings and eBay stuff at the right time, anyone can. I mean, this is literally the world's first ever, I mean, and I mean the whole world, the world's first ever go-kart that is actually gonna look like a real hot rod or a real car. Um, and it's like a kick, it basically is a kit car, but it's not road legal. <laughs> well, not yet. <laughs> this wasn't cheap. I spent, if you're, if you're sitting down good, if you're standing up, I'd rather you take a seat so you don't collapse on how much I've actually spent on this thing. Uh, I have spent up to close to 4,000 pounds on this. And I'm not rich. I'm not rich at all. I work my ass off every day. So, instead of buying an actual car, I do this. <laughs> That I've done is I have guided the brake cable and brake outer um, thing from the brake caliper all the way down to the pedal so it's not going to be in the way of anything in the way of my feet. I'm going to do something like that for the throttle cable eventually. I just need a longer throttle cable because that's actually a motorbike brake cable so I'm going to buy a throttle cable that's actually going to work for that. Um, enough jibber jabber. Let's hear it run. <laughs> so you guys can hear it properly. I'm actually going to take the chain off so I can just rev it up a bit and you guys can hear how awesome it sounds. And there's no backfire problem anymore. I sorted that out with the engine. I took it apart. Changed the um, cam gear about just one degree over because it was just slightly out and there was flames coming out. So I've sorted that out. There's still a bit of a pop, but that's nothing really. That's just um, the pressure escaping quickly. So that's really nothing important. As you can hear, sounds awesome. The governor obviously it governs the fuel and the speed and whatever, so it doesn't over rev, which is a big pain in my ass because it could sound so much better with higher RPM. But as soon as it hits that RPM, it just stays there and it doesn't push past and it doesn't keep that sound going, which is annoying. But I don't, I, I don't really want to risk blowing up the engine because it was quite an expensive engine. So I'm just gonna have to live with it. Positive, having a garage with a thing that breaks is.
Obviously, one of the problems I have here with mounting the engine and having this here is that when I accelerate, obviously there's a lot of vibrations coming from here, which is kind of annoying and it does kind of scare you whenever you accelerate. Um, but the downside is that it actually bends this down. So it, it comes back up, but bending it down is stretching the chain. So I can't have that. So I'm gonna have to obviously have something from here to here to help reinforce it. And then that should help with it, hopefully. Uh, so obviously I'll just get another bit of box section here to there. Same for the other side, just here to there. And then that should help with the vibrations and keep the engine nice and sturdy. This is actually holding up much more than I expected. This expected this three millimeter um, metal sheet is actually holding up really, really well because it's actually got this to support it and also this to support it as well. So uh, box section is probably like the strongest kind of section you can get because if you just get like a piece of tube. Uh, let me see if I can get an example. Box section for a main reason, that's for strength and rigidity. If you have a little tube like this, and let's just say you have a little accident with a wall, so that there's a divot there. Let's say if it's an even bigger accident, you're fucked and you have to build a new one. Well, as this, that does literally nothing. Literally nothing. If I try with the round side, literally nothing. A small little divot, but nothing that's going to make you have to rebuild it. So that's the main reason I went with box section. 3mm box section. So basically to have... So basically how that works is you've got all these sides here. They're quite thick. And these actually just hold it. So when you hit something, it has to actually break away these sides. And also underside as well. To actually be able to break just one side of this and have a little divot. What a lot of people won't get is the size of this thing. I know it'll look quite small on camera. But I'm five foot eight. I'm like average height for a 17 year old boy. I'm, I'm five foot eight. Um, and here's a photo of me standing next to it. The top of the thing just comes up to like the middle of my rib cage, almost kind of. I, I'm kind of forgetting about that. Um, but no, it is really, really big. So I'm just glad that I had this space here. Alright guys, that is it. I'm sorry it's a short video, but again, I've got a lot of work to be doing work-wise, college-wise, and this thing-wise. I will I will get another video up at some point, because I, I do have a week off. I do have some new RCs to video, so I'll do that next week um, at some point, one, once I get parts for uh, one of them, and yeah. Uh, I'm sorry I haven't been around very much, you know. I can't apologise enough, but I do appreciate the guys who stay, I do really appreciate that, so thank you very much. And um, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share it to friends, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya!